this morning, I ask that you turn to the book of Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, we uh, began our study of going through the book of Philippians, and this morning we're going to finish chapter 1. Uh, this will be the fourth installment of this uh, book in the church here at Philippians at Philippi that Paul, the Apostle Paul, is writing to. And uh, we've learned a few things so far along the way. Uh, we've learned that, that, that Paul loves this church, and we are to love the church. And we've learned that uh, there, there's a lot of contention that has gone on in the past and even now in the present of this church, and how Paul's telling them to hold fast in it, to stay together in it, and, and uh, he's, he's given them some great advice so far. And today, uh, I, I, I feel as if, at least in our day and our time, right now, I think this is some of the best advice uh, that we're going to look at today for one of the Lord's churches is, is uh, to hold fast together, to stay together. Uh, we'll get into the, the little bit more of this in just a moment, but then right now let's read, beginning at verse 27 through the end of chapter 1. Paul writes to this church of Philippi and says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of per perdition but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me, and now here to be in me. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning so grateful for everyone that's here today. Lord, we're grateful for what you do for us. We're so very thankful for your word that we've read this morning. And I pray this morning that, that uh, everybody that's here would, would be able to apply something that's said this morning to their life and that they could leave today closer to you than when they came in. Lord, I just pray that if there be someone here that has a decision to make for you, whatever that case may be, that today would be the day that they make that decision for you to tell you yes this morning. Lord, I ask that you would be with the preaching of your word. I pray I would decrease and you would increase, that you would receive all honor and glory. Because you are worthy of that. And I ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. The title of our message is to stand fast together. Uh, now, what does it mean to say stand fast? Because that's not exactly uh, language that we use today. When was the last time somebody told you to stand fast? Uh, if you were to tell me that, for the most part, I, I'd say, how do you just stand here fast? I don't know. But but that's not what this is saying here, the, 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 the phrase to stand fast means to be firm in something, to hold on to a conviction of something, right? Uh, I believe, without a doubt, that, that I'll give you an example, that the Arkansas Razorbacks are the best team in college football. A lot of people disagree with me on that, right? But I'm going to hold fast if you ever met those people who's got the, the, the they, they, they are willing to die on a hill that, that you know is wrong. Have you ever met those people who, the one you were talking about sports who thinks the race breaks are going to win a national championship every year? Oh, this is the year they're going to do it. They're going to win. So they won three games last year. How are they going to, how are they going to go from that to the championship? But they're firm in it. They believe it with all their heart. And if you were to really ask them, if you were to look them up to a lie detector test and, and ask them that question, if they truly believe it, they believe it. Without a doubt. Does it mean that it's going to happen? No, but they believe it. And he's telling them here in verse 27, he says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. And I want to stop here and I want to talk for just a moment about this. I think that if you've been here for very long or if you've listened for very long, especially while we were going through the One Another series, right? We were looking at one another and how we are to treat one another, how we are to live around one another. How I feel about some people who claim that they're Christians. Again, I don't know the heart of anyone. I cannot 
tell, I cannot look at a person and say that they know Jesus Christ as their Savior. But the Bible is very clear as to how we, as children of God, are supposed to act, correct? We are supposed to be loving. We are supposed to be kind. We are supposed to be a certain way whenever we know Christ as our Savior. And how I've been very vocal about how a lot of times people who believe or say they believe or church folk can be some of the meanest people on God's creation. They can be some of the most hateful people of God's creation. And I, I pray that that is not the case for anyone that comes to this church. I pray that we're loving. I pray that we care. But here, G, uh, uh, Paul is writing and he says, Let your conversation only be as it comes to the gospel of Christ. What is the most important thing that we have? The gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the most important thing on the earth? The gospel of Jesus Christ. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing. And he says, only let your conversation be as if it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is our job as people who love the Lord, who follow the Lord, and want to see other people saved? Our job is to point them to Jesus. He says, only let your conversation, and that word conversation means attitude. That word conversation means the way that you present yourself. That word conversation means how you interact with other people. And it actually literally means conversation. Only let it be that which glorifies the Lord and, and, and points people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and the truth is, a lot of times, we as God's people tend to go the other way. Sometimes we let gossiping come in. Sometimes we let uh, uh, talking about other people, I guess that's gossiping, talking about other people, being ugly, saying things we shouldn't say, uh, acting and being in places we shouldn't be. But Paul is telling this church, you should only be doing that, which is glorifying the Lord. And I'll tell you this morning, nothing's changed about that. We, as God's people, should strive that everything that we do brings honor and glory to God. Amen. Not to not to be of our own gain, not to get out there and shove our opinions down someone's throat. Because the truth is, if it's our opinion, that's all it is, is an opinion. Now, it seems like there's a saying, I won't say behind the pulpit, about opinions. But we all know. Okay? But when it comes to truth, that's different. And I want to tell you this morning, I believe without a doubt there is no greater truth than that Jesus Christ loves you. There is no greater truth than Jesus Christ himself left the glories in heaven. He came and was born of a virgin. That he lived a sinless life. That he died on Calvary's cross for me and for you. And then on the third day after he was buried, he rose again. There is no greater truth than that. But you know the truth about of that is, is I can believe it. And I can choose to live how I want to. But how much better of a, uh, a, a presenter of the gospel can I be if I live like I believe in God? If I live like I believe that Jesus is the true Son of God? If I believe it, that I follow Jesus in all that he does? Or if I live my life in a way that does not please the Lord and then say, oh yes, I believe in God. Someone may not believe me. He's telling this church, you, you've got a reputation to uphold. Right? We've got a reputation as God's children. Uh, how many of you was raised and your parents had a good reputation and, and you didn't want to mess up that good name? It meant something. Or maybe you grew up and had a bad reputation and you want to change that reputation. Whatever the case may be. We have a reputation to uphold as children of God. And I believe this with all my heart. Holly Springs is a true New Testament local church. And in saying that, I believe that I'm not the head of this church. No one here is the head of this church. Jesus Christ is the head of this church. Jesus Christ leads this church. Well, what we've got to do is get in behind him and follow him. But if we're not doing that, we can mess up the reputation that we have as Christ's people. My reputation, the reputation of this church should not be for us to walk around and say, look at me. Look at how holy I am. Look at how amazing I am. Boy, I, I, I'm telling you, our church is just the greatest church on planet Earth because we do things that nobody else does. Not. Our reputation ought to be we love Jesus and we love people. Amen. 
love Jesus, love people, and we believe the truth. That's the reputation. But how do we keep that reputation? By doing those things. We've got to believe and we've got to love people. And Paul is telling this church, let your conversation be as if it comes to the gospel of Christ. And here's what he says about it. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. He said, whether I come and see you or whether I'm out about in other places, I'll hear about that church. And how, man, they really love the Lord. Man, they really preach the gospel. Man, they really help the community. Man, they really love people and they'll do anything to tell somebody about the Lord. That's a good reputation, would you say? Can I submit to you this morning that a lot of churches have bad reputation? I'll say it again. A lot of churches have bad reputation. And why is that? We could go on and on about different things that have taken place, different hurt that has happened, but the main reason is because sometimes church people, sometimes churches as a whole, do not heed the first part of verse 27 there, where it says, only let your conversation be as if it comes to the gospel of Christ. God, Jesus, has never hurt me. People have. Right? I think we all can agree that everybody in here has been hurt at one point or another. Amen? We've all been hurt. But God's never hurt me. God's never wronged me. Jesus has never hurt me. And Jesus has never wronged me. And I should strive to be that for other people and to show the love of Christ in that way. He tells them that you stand fast in one spirit and one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Now, last week we talked about it a little bit, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more this week. Uh, together. We are better together. We are stronger together. There's a lot of divisive, uh, a divisive nature in our world today. Can we all agree on that? Uh, there'd be one thing we might all agree on. Everybody could probably agree that there is a divisive nature that goes on in our world today. And I'm not just talking about America, although I could, but I'm talking about in our whole world. We've got people that disagree with others in a not so nice way. You know, I can disagree with you and still love you. I can disagree with you and we still be friends and get along. But in our world today, if you disagree with me, I hate you. There's a lot of hate that goes on in our world today. There's a lot of hatred that goes on in churches today. And I want to ask you and plead with you, let's not let that go on here. Let's have love here. I, 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 might be, I might be old school. Okay? But I believe this. I have a lot of beliefs this morning. I'll just share it with you. I believe that you ought to be able to come into a church. And I can't describe it to you because it doesn't make sense and I don't understand it to myself all the way. But you ought to be able to walk into a church house and feel loved. Amen. You all do. You shouldn't walk into a church house and feel, okay, when I'm picking up from here, this side, I don't like it, right? Right? What I'm picking up here is, oh, sister so-and-so, don't like this other sister so-and-so. You ought to be able to walk into a church house and feel the presence of Almighty God. We are His representatives. That's what we're called to be once we're saved. We are to represent Christ. And you know what Jesus did? He loved. Not only that, people knew he loved them. We ought to be the same way. I, listen, I don't care. I don't care where you fall on your politics. I don't care what you hold beliefs in as far as outside of Scripture. I don't care if you. I don't care if you're an LSU fan. Uh, I don't care who you are, where you're from, what color you are, what 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 uh, uh, haircut you got, whether you got hair, don't got hair. I don't care about any of that. Here's what I care about. Do you know Jesus as you say? Amen. And if not, I want to tell you how to. And if you don't already at that moment, I want to show you the love of Christ. Is that <clears throat> He tells them that they are to be together. In one spirit, of one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. That's the goal. Our goal is not to build up the church treasury and see that we can be the richest church that, that's ever been seen. Our goal is not to, to make sure that we go to other churches and steal church members so that we can say we got the big 
biggest crowd. Our goal is not to, to, to uh, think that we're the best because we've got all oh, the nicest facilities. Our goal is to reach people for the gospel of Christ. And if it's anything else, we're wrong. I think we can come to church and we can have a good time. I have a good time with God's house. I had a good time yesterday. I've had a good time this morning. But the most important thing is the gospel of Christ. If we come here and we neglect the gospel of Christ, we have not done what we're supposed to do. If we leave here and we neglect the gospel of Christ, we have not done what we're supposed to do. And so I pray this morning that we can see these scriptures, we can take them to heart, we can apply them to our life, and we can live a better life as better representation of Christ. But we're better together. It says that in nothing terrified your, by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but, unto, but to you of salvation and that of God. It says well, not to worry about your adversaries. Are you, if you follow the Lord, going to have adversaries? Is there going to be people who disagree with you? Is there going to be people who disagree with you in not so nice ways? And more so than that, we have brothers and sisters all over the world who are literally risking their life for do we realize that we understand that real quick? That there are people in different parts of the world that them owning a Bible, reading a Bible, meeting for a church service, they are literally risking their lives. How blessed are we? Nobody here is risking their life this morning. I think, I think we ought to thank God for that. But there's adversaries. There's people that are going to come up against us Especially whenever we really start doing things for the Lord. There's going to be things take place. There's going to be people who don't like that. Because no... I'm going to tell you what. Satan doesn't like it whenever God's church does what it's supposed to do. That's just the truth. You want me to tell you? I'll be honest with you this morning. If you're here today, and, and, and maybe there's something that God wants you to do. Maybe, maybe, maybe you know it without a doubt. He's laid something on your heart to do. Maybe you've been out of church for a while and it's, it's pushing you to get back into church. Maybe you've never accepted him as your Savior and he's, he's, he's tugging on your heart to be saved. Maybe it's to join the church. Maybe uh, it's something between just you and him that's not public for everybody else. Maybe it's just a decision you need to make between him and you and him. I'm going to tell you the truth. Once you make the decision to do that, to follow the Lord, Satan, there's going to be hard, uh, hardships that's going to happen. There's going to be things going on. But I promise you this. Nothing, and I mean nothing, is more rewarding than following what the Lord has laid on your heart. If the Lord leads you to do something, I'm going to tell you this. Do it. Go full speed all the way. And never look back. There's nothing greater than following the Lord. In verse 29, he says, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but listen to this, also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here to be in me. See, that sounds a little bit different, doesn't it, than what we may hear on the TV. Whenever we go and listen to somebody, most of the time, I know there's some good preachers on the TV, don't get me wrong, but there's some who will tell you that once you decide to follow God, all your problems will disappear. It's not the case. Right here we see that it says that you are going to also suffer for his sake. If we are followers of Christ, there's going to come times of suffering. It may be big times of suffering. It may be small times of suffering. But there will come times. You know what we do in those times? We lean on I don't believe it's wrong to ask God why in the sense of really wanting to know, not just trying to fist and saying why. We may understand, we may not. But the truth is, no matter what happens, if we follow the Lord, we will have no regrets. I have many regrets in my life. All of us do, right? All of us have things we should have done different, wish we would have done, whatever the case may be. But I promise you this. I've never regret following God. May not always went the way I wanted it to. It may have had some, I may have had some difficult times, but I've never regretted following the Lord. I've never regretted following what He called me to do. In verse 30, 
we know what's going on with Paul right here. He says, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. What's going on with Paul? We've discussed it at the beginning. He's in jail. He's in prison. Why is Paul in prison? Because he was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's in prison because he was sharing the gospel. Do you think Paul regretted sharing the gospel? He was in prison. I don't believe Paul regretted it one second. While he was in any prison, he was in prison for a long time. I don't think he regretted it for one second. Preaching the gospel of Christ. I want to implore to you today if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior.